It wasn't until the jar of alabaster was broken, the jar that so many of the disciples, especially Judas, valued and wanted to keep intact. It wasn't until Mary broke that jar mm -hmm. and poured it on the feet of Jesus that Jesus was blessed. Mm -hmm. He was blessed. He was blessed in our brokenness. He is blessed in our brokenness. Mm -hmm. And He moves in our brokenness. Mm -hmm. And He moves us to brokenness mm -hmm. so that He can flow through us, mm -hmm. so that He can have the glory, so that we won't think we're anything. Mm -hmm. Amen. Rock of ages, cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. Mm. Ooh, let the water and the blood from thy wounded side flow forth. Be for sin a double cure. Save from wrath and make me pure. Mm. Not the labor of my hands can fulfill the law's demand. Could my zeal no respite know? Could my tears forever flow? All for sin could not atone. Thou must save and thou alone. Nothing in my hand I bring. Simply to thy cross I cling. Naked come to thee for dress. Helpless look to thee for grace. Foul I to thy fountain fly. Wash me, Savior, or I die. Mm -hmm. While I draw this fleeting breath, when my eyes shall close in death, when I rise to worlds unknown and behold thee on thy throne, mm. rock of ages cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. Today's text is from Luke 14. Luke 14 and verse 10. This was a message that God gave me last year. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I came, you know, happy anniversary church, I, when, I, when God first brought me to the uh, park and Debbie first invited me and I first met, I came and you were all set up in the park and there were seats. And so the scripture has always grabbed me. Mm -hmm. Where should I sit? Mm -hmm. And so God... I just said, I'll take, the, I'll sit in the back. So I sat in the back and I remember he, the music was set up and I just sat in the back. Mm -hmm. And while the preaching was going on, you preach from, you preach from Jeremiah. Mm -hmm. It was wonderful. I said, look at this man, look at this. It's just flowing out of the scriptures. You know, we're just following the scriptures. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so that's when God gave me the message when I sat in the lowest seat. Can you, can you put this back to where it was? I'm always touching things. I lost my place. So, so God laid that sermon on my heart then and there to sit in the lowest seat. Sit in the lowest seat. Amen. If you don't know where to sit, take the lowest seat. Look, let's read. When thou, verse 10, um, Steve, would you read that for us? 14.10. Oh, yeah. But when you are bidden, go and sit down in the lowest room that when he that bid you come, he may say to you, friend, go up higher. Then you shall have worship in the presence of them that sit at me with you. This week I was reading William Gurnall. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just wild how God um, weaves these messages together from different places and you're like that's the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. because he was talking about the lowest seat mm -hmm. and he was talking about humility and he was talking about staying he was talking about knowing your position mm -hmm. knowing your position mm -hmm. knowing your post mm -hmm. knowing your seat mm -hmm. and when and when you were speaking Carrie this morning was like um, you know that's the problem sometimes is that you know, Christ comes to our seat to give us something, to drop something in our spirit, and we're not in our seat. We're not in our seat. And um, it's like being a receiver and not being, you know, they throw the ball. Where's the guy? Like, oh, he's mm. over there. He, mm. I guess he wasn't in the huddle. I guess he mm. ran his own route. Mm. 
and he didn't catch the ball. In fact, he dropped the ball, and I dropped the ball the other day. You know, I just dropped the ball. I didn't value the pearl of great price that God that God dropped in my soul because I wasn't in my seat. Mm. And this is scripture and it says oh, to obey is better than sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And what that means to me is that, you know, God would rather mm -hmm. have me sit in my seat uh, and wait. Mm -hmm. And there's a scripture, I think mm -hmm. it's in Proverbs, and it says, and it says uh, mm -hmm. daily waiting at his gate. Mm -hmm. And so waiting at the gate mm -hmm. is more important than running and doing things. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so if you don't know what to do, just take a seat and take your rightful seat and take the lowest seat. Because just like today, mm -hmm. I, you know, I didn't presume. God told me I was going to preach this sermon two days ago. And, mm -hmm. and I never wanted to say, God, this is my place today. I'm going to sit in the back. Mm -hmm. I'm, going to, I'm just going to repent. And, uh, you know, if you, call, if, you walk, if you drop something on me, you know, I want to be ready. And so I want to be ready to receive uh, the message of God. Thank you. I just want to be ready. Mm -hmm. And so God is calling us to just take the lowest seat in our life, mm -hmm. in our job, in our, in our, in our church, in our, in our, in our, um, in our families mm -hmm. and just be there. And William Grinnell talked about, I don't have the book of me, but he talked about our post and how, mm -hmm. God won't bless us outside of our post. Mm. So number one, we run a, a different route. We go to a different seat, you know. And 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 what I noticed in uh, what I noticed in Africa is that uh, some people come from the west, and they don't sit in the back seat. Mm. They come and they sit in the front seat with their plans. And they have a plan, mm. and 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 oftentimes that plan gets shattered like the jar of spike nard. And they find themselves, you know, after they, 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 they are broken, they find themselves. Amen. Uh, but they weren't sitting in their, in their seat. They weren't sitting in the seat that God assigned them. Mm -hmm. They just wanted to sit in the front. And that's what God was saying. He said, when you're called, when, you, when you're called, when you are bidden, go and sit down. When you're bidden, when, but when thou art bidden, go and sit down in the lowest room. And he bade the, and so that he might call you up. So here's a man who, here's here's someone who came into a wedding feast, and he, we all are invited to the wedding feast. Mm -hmm. We all are invited. Jesus said, go out and, and compel men to come in, mm -hmm. that my house will be full. Mm -hmm. But when you come in, go to the back, mm -hmm. take the you. Take the humble approach and sit in, sit in the back seat. Take a humble approach with God. I don't know. My belly's empty. I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm spiritually impoverished. So that's righteousness by faith. Righteousness by faith is waiting for God to show us our seat. Self-righteousness is taking the seat that you think that you should have. The seat that you think that you deserve. The thing that, that you know, that's the Adamic pride. And that's what God's trying to strip us from. And in this small little verse, it's saying, take the lowest seat, sit in the back, strip yourself, and be humble. And I'll show you where you belong. Amen. But if you go to the... So if you're in the back and you're humble, mm -hmm. Jesus could come and say, come, friend, what are you doing? Come on, you're a, you're a guest. I want you to sit up here in a place of... Of the place of honor, Amen. because everyone who exalts themselves will be humbled. But whoever, but but God is with the humble. God is with the humble. Amen. And when we and when we and when we humble ourselves, he he calls us up to a, a higher place, or at least gives us our proper seat. And if we don't know our proper seat, we're just going to have problems Amen. spiritually. Amen. I mean, look, look at all the seats, and where where am I supposed to sit? And so. This week, William Gurnall said, "You know, if we if we if we get hurt outside of our our seat, outside of our post, God is God. God didn't send us there. If I run mm -hmm. to Sweden and think I I have a burden for the gospel, if God didn't, if that's not my seat, if God didn't say to go, if I didn't wait for Him, the other day I learned something valuable. You know, He dropped that pearl in me, and I just I just kind of took it for granted. Sometimes we take for granted." 
the fact that the God of heaven is talking to us and he's and and how the spirit will give us something and and it's in us and then we go you know on our way and we don't value that pearl and say where should I deliver this child God this is a, a, a really important thing that you've that you've given to me but he gave it to you because you were in your seat and and and, and not running Amen. And so many Christians have exalted themselves in this day and age. They've exalted themselves. But God says, weep. And yesterday as we were preaching, it's like you're smiling. But God says, weep. It's time to weep. Amen. It's time to weep. Mm -hmm. And weeping is taking the lowest seat. Weeping is humility. Weeping is saying to God, here I am. Deal with me here. Mm -hmm. You know? And taking off your, 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 your own garment like Bartimaeus. Just when he heard Jesus coming, he, he stripped off his garment. And he ran to Christ. Amen. Wouldn't you rather have Christ call you up higher Amen. than to tell you, this is not your place. And, and find yourself in brokenness and exhaustion like so many Christians in the 80s and 90s who had exalted themselves you know, and walked in this kingdom authority and walked as kings. We're, we, are, we are worms. Mm -hmm. We're not kings. Mm -hmm. We are, by God's grace, the sons and daughters of God. Now we are the, now we are the children of God with the divine nature. Mm -hmm. But that's nothing to boast up and, and, and leaven us up in, into, these, into this kind of worldly Christianity that we see today, mm -hmm. where everybody's naming and claiming and everybody's walking in just their own pride. They're sitting right there in the front seat and they're saying, and they're saying, here I am. I deserve to be here. And God says, really? You need to go to the back because that's not your place. I didn't put you there. Go put yourself, where you, go put yourself in a position where you can hear God. And as we preach, as we preach, we say, you know, the biggest problem is that we're sinners and that we are have the Adamic nature and that we have leprosy and we have the sins in us. We have cancer. We have this fallen nature that Paul talks about in Romans 7. We have it. Amen. But we, we are not acknowledging it. We are putting on the best robe and we're sitting in the front where if we sat in the back and opened our robe and showed Jesus what we are, then he's going to say, come up. Let me heal you where you Amen. are. You can only be healed in your own seat, in your own place. Mm -hmm. I sometimes am guilty of saying, I want to be somewhere else. I want another job, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm just not happy here. Mm -hmm. and, and But God has given me one family, whether I like them or not. <laughs> I got one. That's my, that's my chair. That is my chair. Right. That's my place. I can't have your family. And, and God has given me one, one position, one station at work. And that's my job. And I can't, I can't murmur and say, God, oh, I could be a great preacher like Spurgeon. What are you doing? Like, what am I doing here wasting my time building Walmarts? And, 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 and here we are in church. And, and this is our position. What is your position here? We all, you know, Amen. I'm grateful for the position that God has given me, that Amen. you folks have allowed me to be. And this is a huge blessing to me. It was a realization of a, you know, of a long time burden that God had laid on my Amen. heart to preach the gospel. Amen. And so, Amen. why would I want to get away from my seat? Amen. It's because I'm driven to a, a discontent of my flesh to say, there's a better place for me. But God won't bless us outside of that, of that place he, he can't. It's not, it's just not right. Amen. We're the body of Christ and we all have a place. Sean, you have a place. Carrie, you have a place. Debbie, Steve, Sophia, Amen. we all have our place in the body. Even today, I came Amen. in here. Amen. I didn't even have my phone. So I'm saying, Lord, if you want me to speak today, what should I do? Uh -huh. And Sophia walks up and says, here's that sermon you just sent me the other day. It's called Take the Lowest Seat. So the body gave me this, like Amen. I didn't have to go out to my car or, or worry or anything. Amen. So she just had it ready. Mm -hmm. Take the lowest seat. For whoever exalts himself will be abased, and he that humbles himself will be exalted. Verse 11. So God wants us to humble ourselves and to wait. And the, the message today from Carrie was really just, let me, let me, 
let me just daily wait at, at his gates and say, you know, God, please, I'm, I'm ready. I'm just ready. I just, I just want, you know, should I go left? Should I go right? Should I do this? Should I talk to that person, you know? And that's, and that's what I want to do. So I, I, I realized the other day that I just sometimes will just run. And, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not in sync with the quarterback. I'm, I haven't, yeah, I don't know good. where, I don't know where he's going to throw the ball. I just, I was sure he was going to hit me. I was sure my way was, you know, he obviously, I ran so fast. I was out there. I was clear. I'm clear. What are you doing? Long route. Well, yeah, but Long yeah, I didn't know you were going. I didn't know you were, I just didn't know you were going there. But I knew, but it didn't, I, you know. You sit in the lowest seat. Keep your route. Keep your route. Sit in the lowest seat. Um, wow. And again, I say, as I said last year, that this sermon is not specifically aimed at those people who are sitting in the front seat today. <laughs> I was ready to get up. And <laughs> Don't get up. That's where God. <laughs> He's looking at me. I was like, hey. When you started, I was like, oh. And I go, no, this is a heavy yeah. moment, and I'm not gonna. <laughs> no. I'm gonna God's that putting, would be good if we all got up. <laughs> Don't leave. There's only so many back seats. Christianity has fallen into the trap of secular humanism where self has been enthroned and God is enslaved to do our will. Mm. And we love that. We've invented a God, by and large, that will bless that and sanction it. But it's not right. It's not real. And when you're preaching the true gospel that we are worms and he is a king of kings and, and he just wants to... Uh, he wants to have the glory in our lives and he wants to have the preeminence Amen. and he wants to have the first place. And that is what, that is what going down on our knee and our face and prostrate. And that is what weeping and that is what ashes reflected. And that's what taking the lowest seat reflects. It's Amen. all your God and I'm not your God. Amen. And I am, and I am, I am in need. And, and I, 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 for 30 years, I can't understand the doctrine that says I'm not in need. I don't have to repent. I don't, you know, I'm good. I'm walking in power. I'm walking in victory. Really. So many of those folks have been shattered. Mm -hmm. Shattered on, on a pendulum ride, a roller coaster of victory and, you know, and, and whatever is at the bottom. So why not just go to the bottom and wait for God? What, <laughs> <laughs> when I was, I, I, I got divorced. I was, it was a horrible place to be. I was, uh, I was, um, I was living well. Had a day, we had a daycare, and the next thing you know, I was sleeping in a warehouse. And I found a mattress. This is in '92. I found a mattress. I put it on the floor, in the trash. I put some bug juice around it, and a friend of mine, some some uh, Jesus freak, whatever, he mm -hmm. let me stay in his warehouse. We didn't even have a shower. And, um, wow. and, and I, bought a, I bought a drop cloth from the paint store and I put it around and I said, God, if you want me to drink this cup, if, mm -hmm. if, if I, I, I don't know where to go right now. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to go to the lowest place that I can say. And if you say I don't belong here, then, then you'll raise me up. But I'm going down there Amen. because Amen. the Bible says every valley will be raised. Every, every, and every hill will be That's made right. low. And so if you don't know where to go, go down. And go, just wait for God in humility. Stop your feet and say, here I am. And God brought me out of that place. And it was a place where I couldn't see my son. It was a horrible place. But I didn't say, I didn't say, oh God, this is a horrible place. I knew that I deserved a lot worse than that. Mm -hmm. And I just put myself in the lowest physical place that I could put myself. Mm -hmm. And then God surely brought me out. Mm -hmm. He surely led mm -hmm. me out of that mm -hmm. place. But I didn't know where to go. I didn't know what my place was. So it makes it real easy if you take the lowest mm -hmm. seat. How can our eyes be focused upon Christ when we when when they're so focused on ourselves and our own um, need to be first? You remember the disciples said, "Who's first, Lord? Who's first? Teach us who's first. You know, and that and so even 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 they were just even they were 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 fighting with this temptation to be to be to be first. And, and, and we're not even speaking about first. We're talking about the Adamic heart that's in us, the nature that wants to, um, you know, uh, disregard what God has for us and, and just say, what, what, you know, what do you have for me, God? You know, not what I should do and not what I, how I should serve and what should I do and, and my readiness to just be used. It's 
my, God bless my plan. And that's what I think got mm -hmm. Judas in so much trouble. Mm -hmm. He never let go of his own plan. Mm -hmm. and, he, and, he, and he presumed the seat that wasn't his. Mm -hmm. And in the end, I think Matthias, right? Oh, 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 they, they cast lots and, mm -hmm. and, uh, and Matthias was brought in. That's how, that's how clearly the disciples saw there's 12 seats here. Judas went his way and let's pray to the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. that he will show us Who's going to take that uh, that Judas seat? Mm -hmm. and, and 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 the lot fell on Matthias, and 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 he and he was positioned with the disciples. Mm -hmm. He didn't just presume to get up there. They didn't say, "Well, this guy seems okay. Let's put him in for a while and see Amen. how he does." Amen. I mean, it was huge. Amen. And so you, you see, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Mm -hmm. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That's the first verse I ever heard in the Bible, and I didn't know what it meant. I even went down to a Catholic church and knocked on the door, and as the minister, as the priest came out smoking a cigarette and whatever was in his glass, I said, "What's the fear of the Lord?" I, it's, I just got saved, and like I, and he said, "I don't know. I, you know, could be a lot of things." Oh. I'm like okay, well, next, you know, oh, <laughs> and and so this week I asked John. I asked John, the fellow at the, the, you know, John and Carla, I said, what does this mean to you, the fear of the Lord? And he, and he uh, you know, he just, he just said, it, it, you know, it, how can God speak to us if we don't have any fear? And I'm like, you know, that's funny, because I've been wondering that question for 30 years, and you just answered it. Mm -hmm. Like, praise God. How can God speak to us if we don't, if we don't have reverence, mm -hmm. fear for him? Amen. Man does not wish to dwell where there is no glory, Mm. And there is no glory in the cross mm. or the grave, but the way of the master is a long-term investment, and that's not what these modern Christians are looking for. Mm. So, mm. when the bread runs out, they leave. And Jesus turned to his disciples and said, will, "Will you leave also?" And they said, "Where can I go? Where can we go? You have the words of eternal life." Mm -hmm. And Jesus knew that God had given them to him. Because that is the right answer. And sometimes when I struggle, I say to myself, where can I go? Where can I go? I can't go anywhere. Jesus is everything. He's everything. And even in my unbelief, where can I go? Back to the world? Back to, you know, nowhere. I can't go anywhere. Jesus, I need you. Amen. I'm a sinner. Amen. I've fallen. But I have to come back to you and come back to you immediately. Amen. You know, and that's Amen. my habit. It's like, it doesn't matter if the house falls in. I'm running back to Jesus Amen. within two minutes. Amen. You know, and getting on my knees and praying. Amen. And I'm not saying that in any kind of glory way. I'm saying, where else could I go? Right. Should I hang around my sin for two days and beat myself on the back and say, Lord, Lord. You know, just run to the source. Amen. I'm reading in Psalm 119, and it says that He will, He will keep us. Like I always, that's my question: is how, how am I kept? How, how can I live this life? And so, listen, 119, um, 119, 133. 119, 133. Carrie, would you read that? Order my steps in thy word, and let not any inequity have dominion over me. Amen. Amen. And then verse 136. Rivers of water run down my eyes, because they keep not thy law. And I say, God, give me that spirit. Mm -hmm. That's the spirit I want these two weeks before the election. Amen. Amen. I really do. I really, really do. And so, look, it's God who keeps our step. And, and, and I think Sophia gave a verse that said, you know, it's God, or you gave, it's God that keeps us. It's God that keeps us. And so, it's God that orders our steps. And someone said, I think it was Spurgeon, that if it wasn't for the Holy Spirit, there's a sermon on, uh, on um, indwelling sin. It's wonderful. And he says, at some point, you know, um, it's a miracle how Christians are kept. And sometimes when you're struggling, you're like, ah, oh, I failed again. But guess what? If God, if God's Holy Spirit wasn't constraining you, we would fall every minute. Amen. And so, if you can live a couple of days or a week, and you and, and you have God's constraining Spirit carrying you, that is a mighty miracle. Amen. And so, Amen. the miracle is with you already, and we're seeing it. And if you're not in bondage today, it's a miracle. Amen. We Amen. can't do that. Amen. That That's is right. that is righteousness Amen. by faith. That is the, that is us just surrendering to Him and saying. 
you know, this is the this is the fruit of it now. We're we're sitting in this room with the fruit of God's righteousness and holiness and whatever sanctification and 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 and, and closeness and intimacy that we've that we've pushed towards Him is the is is direct consequence of us being in this room today with the ability to hear and read his word we could not do any of this without his spirit amen. and so this is a miracle amen. it's a miracle amen amen it's a miracle that he keeps us amen. and he is keeping us and if there's other things that he wants to show us and sanctify us through then he will also keep us in those things the the the, the thing is to just keep coming back to the fountain, to, to, to keep coming back from the fountain. The devil only wins when he, when when he can convince you not to come back to the fountain mm. of Christ. Mm. When that's where our life is, it's a complete throwing off of our old garment and a complete running to His. That is true Christianity. That is the message of the gospel. It is is He is all, and so I just need to continually run to Him in this life and in the next. God will not share his glory with men. He doesn't commingle our creative works with, uh, you know, um, sometimes God will give us the unction to do something and then bless us with the credit of doing that thing. And it's like, God will bless us in our works and those works are his and they're through him and we didn't do, have anything to do with it except for trusting him enough to die to self and say, I'm surrendered. That's what it means. Taking the lowest seat means that you are just surrendered to Christ and that you are willing to die to self. And then when Christ begins to blow, to flow through you and bear fruits, he gives you even part of the credit. Mm -hmm. He's so He's so great. He's so loving. How can a God do that with worms? How can God give us worms this credit and, and, and huddle us and save us from sin? And the process is just saving us from sin. And so it's just um, being willing, being willing and, and, and taking that lowest seat is, is, uh, is, is surrendering to the fireman when he comes into the burning house and he throws you on his shoulders and he's kicking the doors down and he's running out of the house. And, that, and you just surrender. I mean, don't fight them. There's people that are drowning and the guy comes out to save them and they're like drowning the guy. Like, mm -hmm. relax, get on my back. Just participate. Amen. Just take take a humble place and let me do the work in you because this, all this pride, all this mm -hmm. self, that's what's got to go. Amen. That's what's got to go. Taking the first seat has got to go. And God will call you up. And look, he's called many men and women up. Mm -hmm. But most people have found the back seat before they found the front seat. Ooh, Most people have been broken, right? All these hymn writers from the old days, they were just broken. All the disciples were broken. The first step of, of discipleship is brokenness. Mm -hmm. And that is not really being taught from the pulpit today, that God's going to break you. It's also not taught that it could take 30 years to do it. But God, no, God is perfect in His timing. And, and it could take 40 years. God, I'm a... I was always encouraged by that, by the story of Moses, how he was so ready to serve God when he was young. You know, God put a burden in him, right? He knew, like, so, I, I'm going to deliver. You know, I'm sure God was whispering things in his heart about delivering his people. And then Moses went out and said, okay, well, let me try this. And then he killed the Egyptian and tried to deliver that. You know, oh, did, did I deliver you? The guy said, no, you just killed him. And then Moses took off and ran to the desert like, wow, I was so sure that was... I'm so sure, God. <laughs> and God said, "Look, here's what I want, want you to do. Why don't you go in the wilderness? Why don't you go? Why don't you go live in a tent for forty years? And I'll get back to you." Mm -hmm. And that's real. That's real Christianity. That's, that's right. real. That's how God really works. But you won't learn that in a popular, not to mention any names or all the names, books. You won't see that in those books. That God may say, you know, 40 years, this is going to be a slow stew. I'm going to cook you slowly. Mm -hmm. Just keep surrendering. <laughs> and then one day, one day the flower blooms. And it may only bloom for a day. It may only bloom for a day. Uh, some of these martyrs, they bloom for a day. They gave witness to God. It was one moment. But that one moment is a thousand years to God. Like God says, I grew that plant. 
Look at it. It bloomed. Yeah, it all bloomed for it bloomed for one day. And our calling may just be a one day bloom. It may be something that's going to happen at the end where God says, "I need you now. Now is your time." And you're like, oh, "But I'm broken." And that's what Moses said. He said, "God said, now it's time." And Moses said, "I can't even speak anymore. I've been talking to sheep for forty years. I don't even know, you know." And God, and God said, "God said, that's great." Now you are ready because you have taken the lowest seat. And he was in the highest seat when he struck the Egyptian. But he was in the lowest seat after 40 years. And the whole wilderness experience was a was God wanting to see. And that, you know, I just, a little disclaimer. I have a sermon to preach next week and I hope that this won't be like use up my spot no you're, really, you're preaching yeah, this yeah. week so yeah. praise god you. lord willing yeah. i want to share with you about moses and um and how he struck the rock instead of speaking to the mm -hmm. rock and god has you know and god has been speaking to me about that and um mm -hmm. and and so and so and so in the in the wilderness god just wanted his people to um to just take the lowest seat Amen. and not clamor and uh mm -hmm. and uh and not to self rule mm. themselves and not mm. to say okay god we're willing to follow you but look we need bread we need milk <laughs> we need we need uh you know we need these things right so and god said yeah i i, I gave them to you yesterday didn't i mm -hmm. so but i'm not going to give them to you tomorrow right except on the sabbath god said don't go gather manna on the sabbath i'll take care of it okay i got this i'm your father i want you to just trust me you're here in the wilderness I just want you to trust me. You're here in America. I just want you to trust me. You're here in the world in 2016. I just want you to trust me. Amen. Don't bring your shopping list to me. Mm. I don't need that shopping list. God said, don't gather manna on, on the Sabbath. I'll, I'll take care of it on Friday. Any other day, you'll get one portion. And if you save that, if you hide some in your pocket, if you put it in your Ziploc bags, the next day you're going to go in there. It's going to be worms, okay? Because that's, it's, it's just going to go bad. But on the Sabbath day, God said, that's not going to be the case. Gather enough on Friday and I will, mm -hmm. on, Sa on Sabbath, it will still be good. Because that's me telling you the rest. And some of the people didn't believe them. And they just went out and gathered anyway. And that's our human nature. Because it's hard to trust God and it's hard to be vulnerable. And it's hard to take the lowest seat. And it's hard to wait on the Lord. And it's hard to just say, God, what do you have for me? You know, but he wants us there. That's where he wanted Moses. That's where he wanted Paul. That's where he wants me. That's where he wants you. Amen. He wants us all to just stay there with a question mark and say, God, I'm empty here. I'm empty here. Your plan, your football, your, what you have for me is the greatest thing I can have today. Amen. And, and talk about direction. You just gave me direction. You told me to go to banqueting house and share this burden. Uh, you told me to speak to that lady at Starbucks. You told me to do this. And there Amen. is perfect purpose and perfect direction in god in god's in god's leadership it, it trumps anything that we can any plan that we and, and, and as i said granola said if we go outside of that then god is not you know god is not going to meet us outside of that of of, of 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 that seat we're wandering around we're little children with add we're just we're all over the place but that's our flesh and it's hard to get your flesh to calm down mm -hmm. and paul says i pummel my body and i mm -hmm. subdue it lest after preaching to others you know I, I lose i lose the race um and so that is the discipline of uh you know fasting and and waiting and praying and suffering suffering in that in that um in, in, in waiting for god is a cross i mean waiting for god is a cross mm -hmm. because your our flesh is screaming and i don't want to do it and you know and and uh, you know um Maybe you do, but 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 I but I I know that you know it's just constant, and so practical Christianity is working out your own salvation with fear and trembling. That doesn't mean you're controlling your salvation. It means that you're working it out. You're figuring out how God talks, Amen. and how God talks is like what we see in you a lot because you're saying, "Hey, I waited, I waited, and I asked God, and here He moved me here, and then I did this, and and those are precious gifts of of how God moves." And so Christianity by and large needs to stop reading books Amen. and Amen. learn how Amen. to walk with god Amen. each one of us has to recognize the voice of our shepherd and how do we find that you know and then when we find it will we say yeah this is the way he says this is the way walking it and um 
And so that's what Christianity needs is how is a is a is a is a and that's what revival is going to be mm -hmm. when 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 nothing else works because mm -hmm. God allowed the enemy God allowed all this darkness mm -hmm. and stuff to come in to shatter our plans so that like I thought it was this guy I thought it was that I thought it was going to happen how about you don't have to know anything mm -hmm. God didn't want him to know in the wilderness he said you need water come to me you mm -hmm. need something come to me and I, and I'll take care of it um uh, and and so and so the shattering of all our plans I believe in the last days will be us just in a room like we did today and just coming to God saying, Lord, we don't know. We don't know what to pray for. We don't know who to speak. We don't know. We just, we just need you. Amen. And so in that holy desperation, the church will meet God again. Mm -hmm. In that holy desperation, the church will find God. I'm sure David Wilkinson preached on those things because it's that holy desperation and that and that despair mm -hmm. of ourselves and our own plans that God will reveal himself. Amen. He says in Jeremiah, you'll seek me and you'll find me when you seek me with all of your heart. Mm -hmm. And he always says, seek my face. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the percentage of us that doesn't really want to be led by God is, the, is that part of us that is just saying... Um, yeah, I'm not really going to seek him that hard. Because mm -hmm. what if I ask God, what should I do with my money? He says, give it all up. You know what? I haven't asked him that yet. Because I was afraid of what he might say. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know, good retirement money. <laughs> it's slowly going. Praise God. But, uh. Not that we shouldn't think about it, but everything should be on the altar. And so God, God cannot work with the current scenario that the church has put itself in the front seat. And they say, where's God? Where's God? Hey, some people are scheduling revivals. Come to our church on Tuesday night at 730 and revival will happen because we've scheduled God to come. And that is not, well, that's not what, that's not how God works. God works when you're in your church and you're there for, for weeks and you're just crying out to him, crying out to him. And you don't know the outcome and you don't know when he's going to come. They didn't know in the upper room he was going to come. They didn't plan revival. They didn't have a sign outside of the upper room mm. saying revival tonight at 7.30. <laughs> because if they did, God probably wouldn't have came that night. Mm. He wants to surprise us and he wants to be our everything and he just wants to be our rock and he didn't want the children to he just didn't want us to plan and figure everything out and go crazy because that's part of our flesh it's that's ingrained in our dna but it's also ingrained in our dna is the curse of sin that he came to save us from and that is the reality of christianity that christ came to save us from what dwells in us the remnants of, of the adamic curse he has to wipe. He has to wipe it out. He has to defragment us. He has to. He has to. He has to change us. So the only thing remaining in the end, when he comes, is going to be the new nature and the, and the, and the soul that's trusting in him and trusting in his righteousness alone and doesn't have a backup plan mm -hmm. and all that other stuff about mm -hmm. ourselves has to go. Mm -hmm. It has to go, mm -hmm. and it will go. So why not let it go now? Mm -hmm. Why shouldn't we let it begin to let it go now and say? You know what? It's going then. I need to let it go now. Mm -hmm. Why mm -hmm. carry that bag all the way to the airport only to say, you know what? You can't bring that over here. It's got stuff in it that I you can't that can't cross the other side. Sin can't cross the other side, and and self will can't cross the Jordan. They can't. Mm -hmm. None of that stuff can get in. So really, God was letting them drag a big suitcase around <laughs> uh, the wilderness until every little piece of it fell apart, and they and, and they had nothing because mm -hmm. God said. I got other stuff for you. I got a plan for you over on the other side. And it is a complete plan. It has nothing to do with what you stole from Egypt. What you didn't trust me on. What you had to bring. What you had to fill your pockets with. Because you didn't trust me on. You know. All of us are. You know. That is what we need God. Like all of us are. are um, you know. We trust God. And we're moving forward. But we also have these. Some of us. I do have other things that we're just still like we're not sure because that is real faith and that is real the reality of walking with God is different than the theory of walking with God and and um and that is why we're in this wilderness experience and that is what God is saying just let it all go you know let it go um let it go the problem is that today the church is walking in you know, the, the, a lot of church people are walking in a theoretical 
um, religion, right? It's some part truth and part error. And, and the part truth is the word of God. Now you can go into a church and you can read a scripture and it won't mean anything to you if you don't believe it. If you, if God hasn't spoken life into it, if it's not a reality, sometimes you read a scripture like, man, I, 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 I've never seen it like that. I'm seeing it for the first time. And that's God opening your eyes Amen. to the scriptures. And it says that. He opened our eyes so they will receive the scriptures. And Marge, you said that, you know, yeah, we could preach to your blue in the face. And until God uh, brings life to his sheep, they're not going to hear it. But the Bible does say that pre that, that faith comes from, from, hearing. from hearing and hearing from the word of God. And, and preaching has its place. And I think it has its place. No, I know it has its place. Right now, yesterday I saw a YouTube video of one young man and he was following a gay pride parade in Australia. And he was just saying scriptures. You know, uh, the, you know uh, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And he was quoting and, and, and angry demonic spirits were turning around and confronting him and boom, 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 you know. But look at the walls of Jericho, how they fell when the faithful marched around them. And so we're not condemning an entire generation. We're condemning the tea water that they're all steeping in. And we're saying God is plucking them out of the fire. When I went to Africa and I preached, the, the Muslim said, you know, we thought all we thought all Americans were gay. This guy's, this guy's, huh? This guy's, this, this guy, this guy is uh, preaching about Jesus and he's preaching about, I preach against homosexuality. I just preached, you know, that we should abandon our wickedness. And a Muslim was sitting there and he was like, he said, hey, that's pretty good. To, to the, my pastor sat next to him like he didn't know me. And the Muslim said, that, that way, God, do you hear what he's saying? And the, and the pastor was like, yeah, this is interesting, right? And he, said, he said, I thought all white men were gay. Wow. And the reason he said that is because wow. some white people, excuse me, some ministers from the West had gone over there. And, you know, and they, and, 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 and so they said things like, um, they said things like, uh, well, when it came to the subject, they just vacillated on it. And mm -hmm. the Africans picked up, pick up on that vacillation. Yeah. And look, part of the generational curse is that we've all been steeped in the tea bag of, mm -hmm. of gender, of whatever this, confusion. whatever this confusion is that the devil has planted years ago and, and worked really hard to grow. It has even, even the ministers are walking in those weeds, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's like, don't talk about that. Don't talk about that. That means you're steeped in the tea. You have been steeped in the tea. You don't even know what you smell like. But you go to Africa, a place that doesn't play that stuff, mm -hmm. they're going to go, white people are, I smell that. And God smells it. And God smells it. And, and it abhors the nostrils of God for a minister of the gospel to be vacillating and compromising on, on what we stand for. And when you go and you say, why are the people so confused? It's because the ministers are confused and they drank the same juice and they have drank this tea and it's been slow. And you know why they drank it? Because they're watching the kids watch the Disney Channel. They're just letting the, they're letting the world babysit their kids. Mm -hmm. It's coming in. It's pouring in like the Titanic is sinking. The water's coming in. Mm -hmm. And it's the waters of compromise. And, mm -hmm. and everyone is just saying, yeah, but, you know, you can't. It's politically correctness. You can't say that. Right? And so this is, this is, the, this is the tea that we're in. And when you go outside of the country, people are like, oh, I'm not drinking that tea. Mm. I won't even tell you what, a, what, a, what, a, what another sister from the West was teaching the African women. I won't even say that in church. But it was like, get those people out of here. You know, when I go there, I say, you don't have to listen to me, but don't listen to any of them. Okay? If you trust me, praise God. If I say something, but don't listen to them when they're telling you these things that I can't mention today. Just, it's Americanism. It's Westernism. It's garbage. And it's going over there as it's the gospel. And people are taking the front seat and they're over there. And they're preaching it. And the ministers don't want to... The ministers don't want to, even though they know, they don't want to say anything because they're getting, they're getting taken care of. You know, they're, 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 the, 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 the people from the West are blessing them. And so God told me this year to go over there and say to them, put your hands back in your pocket. Take your hand and get it back in your pocket. Because God has given you revival. God has given you flame. God has given you love. Don't trade it. 
for a few dollars for some white guy, some, some preacher from the West to come over here and take over and put that sign up there saying revival's coming. Don't do it. And it is so strong in my heart. So pray for that, if you will, that when I go over there, that I can tell the Africans to, to don't take the bait. Don't trade. You said to a fellow the other day, I said, you... Now, you think we struggle. They struggle. They don't have anything. They struggle. So I said to the one fellow, uh, Dale, I said, he's a pastor. He was asking me for money. You know, he was asking me for money. So one fellow had said, can I get money for my education? I said, well, you know, are you, do you feel that you're more important than these children who don't have anything? You being a man? in view of all the scriptures that says you should work and you should actually give something to other people instead of putting your hand out. But, but we've done this. Westerners have conditioned this wonderful, beautiful nation that has suffered to say, give me a watch, give me an iPhone. Yeah, and then they just start turning over. They just start surrendering like, like uh, the, the blessings of God. They just start, and I see it now happening. I see it in these ministries that I've been working with. And so, so I want to go. So, so Dale said to me, oh, when you send this man the money, can you add $20 for me? And I said, compromise. And I said, Dale, did the Lord tell you to ask me for $20? Like, it's really important that you answer the question. Did God tell you? Because, because you have suffered, man. I see you living without food. I see you preaching the gospel. I see you suffering. Are you willing to suffer? Are you willing to give up all that for twenty dollars? That you that you somehow felt that you had to manipulate me, so you're taking the bait, you're taking the bribe, and you're selling your birthright. And pretty soon, I'm going to come back here, and you're all going to have nice clothes and shoes, and you're going to have everything except that fire that you had when I first came here, and you didn't have nothing. You're going to sell that. But the point was, mm. yeah, so that's, that is sad. Because we were saying to them, um, you stay here with your fire and with God. And someday when the West falls, God will send you to the West with this fire. And you'll be fire starters in the whole world. Hold your position, man. Don't sell it. But with their iPhones and their phones, they're, they're like baiting everybody. They're like, uh. And so the ministers there have to preach, like, let's not take it. Let's not take these trinkets and, 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 mm -hmm. and sell what we have. Yeah. And so it's very, it's mm -hmm. just, it's, wow. it's, uh, it's, it, it really bothers me. Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, and, and if you were there, you'd see, you, you would just know that there was fire. There was just fire. And I've never experienced that fire. And people from the West should go over there and not try to drench the fire. They should get humble and say, God, what is this? I've never seen Christianity like this. I've never seen people desperate. It comes from suffering. It comes from the flesh being being put in that last seat and not having and, and needing water and needing, you know, it comes from their suffering that they have found God. The other day, they didn't have any water. The children didn't have water again. And so the pastor said, I didn't want to tell you. I just, um, mm. we just took the kids into a quiet place and we prayed. Amen. Amen. He said, we went out and we cried. The kids, the kids know, the kids know what's on the line. The kids, obviously, if you need water, you know what's on the line. If you don't have something to drink or wash in, uh, you know. And so they cried. They cried out to Jehovah. And, and the pastor said, the rain came. The rain came. And God gave them enough to drink. He didn't, it, it stopped. It wasn't enough for the next day or a week. It was just, they cried out and God gave them Amen. water Amen. to drink. That message just came in. I just got that. And I was like, hallelujah. Yeah. Because the children cried out to God and, the God and God gave them, God gave them what they asked for. The Bible says, what? What man, if he, what, 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 if a person, if he asks for bread, will the Lord give a stone? Mm -hmm. God says, ask me. And the children asked him and they cried out out of a desperation. And that's when God met him then. And God will meet his church when they're at the same place. Mm -hmm. Amen. And when we're walking in a true reality, a dual reality, one, the reality of who we really are. 
and what, what is still in us, mm -hmm. we take a good look at ourselves and we say, God, Holy Spirit, show me. And the Lord won't show you all at once if he were to show us what we, was still in us. Amen. But look, that's not who you are. It, 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 we, are we are a soul. We are a soul that has been enrobed and enwrapped with the righteousness of Christ. That is who we are. That criminal that's within us, that criminal that still lives in our house until Christ comes, that's not who we are. If we embrace that, we embrace that, we embrace what God is trying to actually liberate us from. We're going backwards. So we ought to just embrace the new man, mm -hmm. the new woman, and the, and the new righteousness. But, but none of it is good. There's no part of that that can get... That can get the righteousness by faith. Abraham believed God and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. He just believed God. Will you believe God enough to rescue you from a burning house that you don't have to do anything? That you don't have to help them? That you don't have to say, hold on, let me, let me just get on your back. Let me hold on this way. Let me do this. Let me do that. There's nothing. Jesus has done it all. Amen. He really did it all. Amen. And so we just have to trust in what he has already done. And that, and that is righteousness by faith. I think we might be close to being out of time. Um, the clock's right there. Okay. Good. And so we'll just we'll just move into. Yes. I wanted to talk about Matthew, but I won't do it today. But about the wedding garment. But we'll just refer to it. I think it's Matthew twenty-two, where the um, where the Lord uh, came into a wedding, um, and 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 those uh, folks were invited to come. And he found a man in his own garment. He found a man. Is that Matthew uh, 22? Matthew 22. Yeah, 22 um, yeah, Matthew 22, 11. Matthew 22, 11. I was wondering what would happen if the preacher, real preacher came. Would I have to stop? You know? I prayed about it. I, I, and I felt like, um, no. <laughs> yeah. God rearranged. So. Who, was, uh, who was supposed to come? Sylvia. Sylvia. It's very strange. Very odd. Verse. Very odd for Sylvia. This is a God moment. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, this is a God <laughs> moment. Without a doubt. 11 through 14. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Would you read a little bit of that, Eli? Um, uh, Emilio, would you want to read like a little? Just read verse 11. Verse 11. 10 11? Oh, yeah. 22 11. 22, 22 11. And yeah. when the king came in to see the guests, he saw that there are there, there a man which not had which had not on a wedding garment. And so on verse 12. And he said unto him, Friend, how camest thou in hither not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. <clears throat> Carry thirteen. Then said the king to the servant. Then said the king to the servant, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into the outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Debbie fourteen. For many are called, but few are chosen. God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Amen. Here was a man. Uh, oh, on that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did I not prophesy in your name? And many will be surprised at, um, you know, at, at the disconnect. Where did, where's the disconnect? So the disconnect is you were invited to the wedding. You came into the wedding. You sat down. You were with the regular guests. The, 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 the sheep and the goat were all in one place. Except the Lord said, she's got a wedding garment. He's got a wedding garment. But look at this man. Friend, how, how did you get in here with the doctrine of Joyce Myers? How did you get in here with this stuff? How did you get in here? You, you're not in my righteousness. You're, you're wrapped in some self-righteousness. You've got all these false... You didn't trust me. You didn't surrender. You just, you just... You walked in yourself. You're dressed in your own robe. You never gave up your own will. And you are in your own righteousness. And that can't save you. And I'm sorry because it's the end. And men will go out into the, in, 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 into the outer darkness at that point. It's over. There's not another chance. And Jesus Christ, the loving Jesus Christ said this. That men will go out of that place in, 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 in gnashing their teeth. It's over. It is over. So the only thing that matters in the end is that you are, you have, 
you have allowed God to give you the spiritual transplant and on me and, and that we trust him in the sanctification process and that we Amen. don't worry. We just keep giving ourselves to the doctor. We keep on surrendering to him and daily waiting at his gate and waiting for him to tell us Amen. something. Amen. And that is righteousness by faith. Amen. You are wrapped in his holiness. Amen. You are wrapped in his fruit. Stay there. Abide there. That is his place for you. And when you go and when he comes and says, Steve... I see you are in my garment. And, 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 and God's going to see his garment on you. He's yes. going to see it. Mm-hmm. He's going to see his garment on, on, on us. And, mm-hmm. and, um, and, that, and that's a wonderful thing. But there will be people there that didn't get it. There will be people there that thought that they walked in. And, and it's, Oof. you know, the, pro- the real problem is that it's the Adamic garment that Jesus Christ came to, 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 to undo and, 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 and take away the curse of sin. So that man sitting in that front seat in his original Adamic curse, that Christ was never uh, uh, wiped away on this earth. He was never part of the sanctification process. He never walked through the wilderness. He stubbornly kept his, I'm good. I am good with this coat. Hmm. You know what? He he said mm. the coat might have looked good that he had on, right? It might have been nice stuff. But underneath it was hiding all of his sins and all of his defilements that he never that Christ was never given yeah. access to get to get rid of in that guy. And that is the real truth, folks. That is mm. the truth of the matter. That some people are gonna go to heaven trusting in Christ, and others are gonna think themselves worthy to get there. And they're going to be surprised because you can be the best moral person on the, on the earth. And if Christ Jesus hasn't cleansed you from your sin, if he hasn't come to save you from your sin, if he hasn't replaced where your heart is and where your trust is, you're going to be among the crowd who is, who is, who is, who is in their own attire, who has not traded with Christ. Jesus said in Revelation, trade with me. Trade yeah, with me. Yeah. You think that you are, are you think that you are, um, are are wise and wealthy and 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 and, and, and never did a church, <clears throat> never did a generation think they were so blessed, even in even in, in the Christian uh, Christendom as this one, and that you need nothing, but you do not know that you are blind, naked, and re- you know you're you 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 do not see your Adamic sin. You don't see your Adamic sin. Let it go. You only see you only see this garment that you wrapped yourself in, like Adam, to hide it from me. And if you hide it from me, I can't heal you. And if you get to this place across the Jordan and into this wedding feast and you and you haven't given it to me then, then 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 what can I do? What can I do? It's over. You have to go to your place now. And and and, and that is the that is the judgment. And so that is the, um, mm-hmm. that is the uh, motivation, that is the desire of us to, to trade with Christ. And, and especially to just say, Lord, you know, you, you know, save me from this side. Save me from this other part of me. And um, save me from the Adamic curse. Mm-hmm. Because in Romans 5 it says, I love Romans 5. It's, it's my default chapter. Um, It's just so 19 for as one for as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners so that by the obedience of one many will be made righteous. So because of Adam we were all fallen under the curse of sin because of what Christ came he undid that. And and um, next week Sophia's going to share something um, about about Jesus' sacrifice. God's been speaking to us also about the covenant, the covenant between Christ and his Father. It's wonderful. Um, and so Adam did something, and Christ did something to, to become the second Adam and to undo what Adam did. And that's what's actually happening in us today. That's what's happening in us today. There's, a, there's the Christ part of us that Christ has is working to undo the curse of sin and there is mm-hmm. and there is the Adamic nature that still wants to stay and remain and there are teachers that are saying it's okay for it to stay but it's not okay for it to stay mm-hmm. because Jesus came to undo it and to totally eradicate it mm-hmm. and to balance the books before God by paying the price by his, by his own blood mm-hmm. for for our iniquities and our trespasses and our sins and so it's simply a trade 
And it's a trust because we have to go to the fountain and we have to continually go there and say, we, it, Christ died one time, the Bible says, only one time, one sacrifice. You are justified freely by His, by his grace. But sanctification is the work of a lifetime. And sanctification is the process of continually giving our unbelief and our flesh nature to Christ and continually having faith and continually following Him and continually asking Him for drink and food and water and continually taking the lower seat and being subservient to Christ. And that is sounds easy, but His will over our will. Our will is here. His will lays on top of it. And that's it. And there it is. And so the life, work of our lifetime is just continuing to surrender our will to Christ. Because that's a gesture of love. That's a gesture of trust. It's, a, it's where peace is. The Bible says agree with God and be at peace. Yeah. What that means is agree with Him about yourself. Agree with Him about everything. Yeah. But certainly agree with Him about your condition. Your biblical condition. And the church just needs to rise up again and to preach the gospel. Yeah. And we need to share the true gospel. And it doesn't have to be complex theories. It just has to be verses. You know, like um, the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ the Lord. That is, that is the gospel. If you follow this path, you'll be lost. If you follow this path, you'll be saved. But many people are living in the middle of those two verses. And even we are. I mean, we are. We're vacillating. But, but we are sealed and we are surrendered and we are justified freely by His blood and we are sealed by the Holy Spirit as a, as a gift. But, 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 but we still need to continue moving towards, towards the Jordan. And in this time before the election, we, um, I, just, I, just, um, I just think it's critical that we continue to pray and cry out to God and not lose faith. Amen. And, then, and then we also pray that God will, um, you know, if, if, if things turn, if the wicked are routed, that the conservative religious people will not go back into their happy place of thinking that somehow they accomplished this. Amen. And that God had us on the precipice of where we didn't even know we were. Amen. Because we are there. We're really there. We're really there. And it's scary when you see a generation that is all... Like, how can I reach... How can we reach all these kids? There's so many in every school. And they're learning so much stuff. And so it's like, oh... The, 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 you, can't, you can't say that the job isn't... 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 isn't a, 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 the, a, such a great job. And there's only and there's and, and there's there's a remnant of people that are going to stand with God and say this is our responsibility to pray with God. And when I didn't come here the other day, and I was like, why does God need me to go there? And like He doesn't need me to go there. And it's like that thing where God will drop, uh, God will God will say yes, you you all are participants in this. I want you to pray. Here's the burden. Bring it back to me. Bring this back right. to me. And 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 when and when I said that, I thought, well, there's hope. There's hope for this election. There's hope for this time now. If God's Amen. given us burdens to pray, Amen. then there's hope that, that He has a plan. Mm. And, um, and past the election, whatever way it goes, God said, you, you just need to trust me. Amen. You just need to trust me. Don't be out here on election night biting your nails. I just stopped, by the way. <laughs> I didn't tell you. Thank you. <laughs> every week, if you wonder why I'm preaching like this. Because I'm like, how can he preach the confidence and peace of God if he bites his nail? What's going on over there, mister? <laughs> Some lady in Africa told me I was cannibalizing myself. And she saw me eating my nail. She said, that's cannibalism. It was the same lady who made me burn the popcorn. But that's another story. Oh, and, um, <laughs> and so... And so um, we, we can't be biting our nails on election night. We can't say it has to go this way or that way. We have to just say there's no way out. Either way, you know, I, I, you know, I want to see the Republican Party. I want to see, uh, the, I want to, I want to see the uh, Supreme Court. I, I just, I, you know, I, but I, I, I really have given up. I really have surrendered and said whatever, God, whatever God's will is. Because God already told me and dropped the burden on me to preach. To the young people, I'm like, I'm going to get past that. Yeah. I'm going to get past that. If they don't block the airports and I can still get out of here, I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. I probably shouldn't bring that up, but I did give Sophia a big tub of peanut butter. And I said, you know what? Fill your gas tanks on election night. Probably shouldn't be saying that from the, from the pulpit. But in Africa, mm -hmm. right before the election, 
uh, uh, Mussolini wanted to stay in power, and so uh, the internet went down, yeah. and they couldn't get food, and so yeah. that really happens. Yeah. It's not yeah. just uh, may not happen here, but it does happen in places where people want to keep the power. So, um, you know, anyway, I, I, I'm not one of those people that say go hide bullets. I don't right. even own a gun, but but you know, a couple of. Uh, jars of Skippy peanut butter, full tank of gas, and some water would yeah. always be a blessing because if, 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 if God forbid, power went down or you lost something, uh, you know, you'd have a little bit of food, mm -hmm. you know, to hang out and pray and just, you know, things, are, things could get desperate. God could turn this thing around. What did you, how did you say it? God could, yeah, God could just take the story from us when we just lay, let it down and he could, he could just turn this story and, and then you're, we'll be like, wow, yeah. we have to remember to praise him and yeah. say, yeah. God, you turned this story without our help. We know it wasn't Donald Trump, yeah. right? We know yeah. it wasn't. But there are some godly men. I saw, I mean, Pence, he was praying, whatever. I, I think there's still a few knees that haven't bowed to this popular flow of, 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 of devastation that the devil planned for this country. Mm -hmm. And I, I say, I believe today that God can... God can wrap the wickedness. Amen. I believe Amen. he can put fear in her heart. And somehow I believe that he's already put some fear mm -hmm. in the hearts of those people. That thought that they were, that the deal was sealed. They had infiltrated the generation. They had put the poison out there. And they were shepherding it all the way up to this one election. Mm -hmm. and, the, and, and, you know, the overthrowing of our freedoms and our constitution and the whole nine. So anyway... Um, and worse than that is the souls that will be lost under that regime, mm -hmm. the souls that will be lost under this mm -hmm. limited uh, 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 ability to preach the gospel, the souls that will be lost mm -hmm. under under the theory that you can pick your own gender, you know, and that this is all okay. And then we're just this, uh, a, a, a country of, of Sodom and Gomorrah, you know, waiting for the punishment of God. We know that we are interceders like Moses. We know that Moses went up on that mountain and he was with God by himself. And he went down, and the people were playing with the with the golden, you know. And he was bringing them down their law, and uh, and uh, but he still interceded for them. And so even though we know, we still we got, we got to just get in the gap. And I was guilty. I said, I'm not in the gap. I need to live in the gap for the next two weeks. And he just need to live in the gap and pray for pray for today. We will pray for the, for the election for the nation. And, and mostly, more important, for the souls that have been uh, uh, that have been influenced by the false um, God-hating agenda, while the Christians were sleeping, and let it happen because they were watching the Disney Channel and they were trick-or-treating. And I'm not putting all that things down, but they were just drinking the waters, just drinking that, the wine of the world, Babylon. They're just drinking it. They're still drinking it. No one's woken up. It's still, it's still like the alarm still has to be sounded. Like, man, you don't know how close you came and maybe they'll never know. Maybe we'll know. Yeah. Maybe it'll That's just right. be God who tells us you just don't know mm -hmm. how close you were to national destruction. And, mm -hmm. and I, I just want to believe that God will not let us go down that road and that we will, he will allow, he will turn, he will just turn this thing around and, 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 and bring us back to, mm -hmm. to righteous rules and that there will be men who will still preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. Anyway, today I really don't have a calling. I just, God said, you know, take the lowest seat, take the lowest seat and thank you for opening this message up, Carrie, and with the, with the, um, with the, uh, with the repentance of like, wow, it feels terrible. It really feels terrible to uh, miss um, uh, when God drops something in your spirit and you say, I should have done this. And that's how I felt the other day. And I'm like, wow, I felt like Peter who just betrayed the Lord. And I, and I said, uh, wow, thank you, God. Thank you, God, in the long run that you showed me that, that, that I that I that I'm not I'm like running and I'm not I'm not ready to receive the ball and I'm not ready to when you give me something I'm taking it for granted I'm presuming I'm eating so much good fruit and it's like I shouldn't I should just be like if I get one thing from God today I want to be obedient Amen. to God I want to be obedient to God rather than sacrificing and laying down mm -hmm. my own sacrifices to Him. It's better that I just be obedient to the one thing that He tells me. Mm -hmm. So I plead with Him today mm -hmm. that He'll that He'll drop, um, He'll He'll trust us again and He'll trust mm -hmm. me and He'll drop. Mm -hmm. Will that we'll just we'll just wait for Him mm -hmm. and that we will repent to Him mm -hmm. personally. That we that we have taken the wrong seat. That we have wondered why we're not in the right place in life. That we have. 
we have been antsy and we haven't we haven't sat down in a place of humility and just said, God, I'm yours. Just show me what you show me what you want. Yeah. And even with this election, God, show us what you want. Yes. We don't have a plan now, right? It's it, 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 it's yeah. just it, 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 here here we are. And 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 the big picture is save the nation, save the nation, and turn us again. Turn the hearts of these young people who are so hungry, and the harvest is just <clears throat> plentiful. And give us the courage to just, you know, uh, sometimes I preach bold. And then other times I am terrified. And I say, Sophia, I will give you $10 if you go give this track to that lady. Because I haven't paid her yet. But I'm like, I just, and I get, there's times that I get terrified. And I'm like, I can't give this track out. But I know, and then when you walk away from somebody, know that you didn't share the gospel with them. And that maybe they will never hear it again. And, you know, we just need to, um, we just need to understand the time that we live in. And that's my prayer today, that God will open our eyes, show us our true condition, and show us the time that we live in and our place mm-hmm. in this time. What is our chair now? Mm-hmm. Where should we be sitting, waiting for that? God could drop big things into the church. God could tell Amen. us to do things. Amen. And we just need to be ready for, for, that, for that direction. We just need to be waiting at His gate and saying, God, I'm available today. I surrender my will, and uh, and here we are. Amen. And that's it. So, praise Amen. God. Mm-hmm. Let me just um, say thank you, Ryan. That was yeah. totally by faith, and um, I just it, it's amazing to me because just last night when you had texted me about um, the this teaching, mm. I remember going, man, that was a really good teaching. I I could hear that again, and something in my heart said, I wonder if he feels like he's supposed to preach tomorrow. And then I just went, well, no, because. Zoomio's coming, and you know that seemed all ironed out. But I really believe God. God is doing something. It also falls in line with having you preach two weeks in a row because I just now realized that's next week. So um, God knows, and I couldn't have. You know, I just I move to a place where I step out, and I say this. Sophia's heard me say it all along. When you get to where you don't know what to do, and you've prayed, and this is the only thing before you step out in faith, and I tell God, if this isn't it, close the door. And he's been faithful to do that. And I just feel like tonight, today, he opened the door. Mm-hmm. And it was clearly of God. I think our spirits all bear witness mm-hmm. that this was the message from the Lord. And really.